In August 1945, the news of Japan's surrender made it to Laos, and many Japanese soldiers who refused to surrender committed suicide before the eyes of the Hmong people, which startled many Hmong people. Even after the Japanese had surrender, Lao Prince Fetsarat and his Lao Isara movement still held on to the Laos independent that was granted by the Japanese and strongly opposed the French return to power in Laos. In August 1945, Lao Prince Sufanuvang contacted Ho Chi Minh for support against the French. On September 8, 1945, French troops enter Luan Probang and compelled the Lao King Sisavang Vong to renew the French Protectorate Agreement and for the Lao King Sisavang Vong to dismiss Prince Fetsarat that was against the French return to power in Laos. Two B. Li Fong Hmong troops also helped the French to recapture Luan Probang. The Lo clan and the Li clan feud for political power that was started by their father Li Fong and Lo Blyayo back in the 1930s continues down to their sons Tu Bi Li Fong and Fei Dang Lo Blyayo. On September 14, 1945, Prince Fetsarat set up his own government in Vientiane to oppose the French return to power. Prince Sufanuvang, Prince Sovana Fouma, Prince Fetsarat, Faya Kameo, and Nui Abe all supported the new government in Vientiane to oppose the French return to power in Laos. On October 1945, Ho Chi Minh orders Viet Minh troops to cross over to Laos to attack French position in Laos and seizing major cities such as Xian Quan City to support Lao Prince Sufanuvang plea for help. On the night of November 22, 1945, Nong Het came under attack, which forced many Hmong civilians to fled to the high mountains around Nong Het. At the time of the night attack, majority of the Hmong troops were stationed around the mountains overlooking Nong Het as usual. The enemy had used the darkness of the night to sneak into Nong Het to try to kill Tu Bi Li Fong. Only a few Hmong troops was stationed inside Nong Het, and they tried to repel the attack, but with no success with most ended up being killed, while the remaining Hmong troops took to the mountains to join with the majority of the Hmong troops around the mountains overlooking Nong Het. French Commando Maurice Gautier stated, That night I was up in the mountain with the Hmong warriors like usual, and we would sleep in the mountains like usual. We were in form of a column of troops closing in on Nong Het but we didn't expect them to make it to Nong Het this fast, let alone to slip through us to get into Nong Het itself. That night I was woken up to a heavy barrage of gunfire below in Nong Het. We can see the fire fight in Nong Het from our position up in the mountains, but we couldn't tell who was friendly, and who was not from all the gunfire. The shooting below in Nong Het alerted all the Hmong warriors around the mountains overlooking Nong Het, and soon the Hmong warriors around the mountains begin to move around, sending message from one mountain to the next preparing for a counter-attack once dawn break. When dawn came, we can see about 100 heavily armed enemy soldiers, with some equipped with machine guns. Some of the enemy had dug in, which was a sign that they were intended to stay. Before I could say anything the Hmong warriors opened fire on them from all sides since they had the enemy in circle. The battle raged on from dawn of first sunlight to the afternoon, and by afternoon the only remaining enemy left was a lone machine gunner that was still firing, and that finally went silent when the Hmong warriors overwhelmed his position. The last machine gunner that was finally overwhelmed by the Hmong warriors was a Japanese soldier using a Japanese machine gun. There were other former Japanese soldiers among the dead with their Japanese rifles. The group was a Viet Minh fighting group and they had Japanese fighter among them. After the Empire of Japan had surrendered some of the Japanese soldiers who refused to surrender, ended up joining the Viet Minh to fight against the French in Indochina. In retaliation Tu Bi Li Fong led hundreds of his Hmong troops along with French commando Maurice Gautier to attack the Viet Minh operation base in Lat Boa, and successfully defeated the Viet Minh at Lat Boa. Tu Bi Li Fong once said that his dreams was for his Hmong people to be educated, and believe that education would make the Hmong people have a better life like how he did through education. He strongly needed the French to stay in power in Laos to benefit his Hmong people. He said that the French were the one that can give his Hmong people that opportunity. On October 10, 1945, 
Lao King Sisavang Vong dismissed Prince Fetsaraf and appointed Phya Kameo governor of Vientiane, but King Sisavang Vong did not know that Phya Kameo was also supporting Prince Fetsara against French return to power. In anger Prince Fetsarat on October 12, 1945, issued a provisional constitution and declared himself head of the new Laos. On October 20, 1945, Phya Kameo governor of Vientiane attempted to depose King Sisavang Vong for refusing to recognize the new regime of Laos independence. In late December of 1945, the French commando along with Tu Bi Li Fong and Fuan Prince Sai Kam came up with plans to retake the town of Xian Quan from the Viet Minh. On December 27, 1945, French issued license for dealers and smokers to better control the opium cash flow. This was mostly done to prevent the Lao Isara movement from making profits off the opium and using it to purchase weapons to fight against the French. The Lao Isara movement was strongly against the French occupation of Laos and have been using the sales of opium to purchase weapons to fight against the French occupation. The Lao Isara movement later became known as the Path at Lao. On January 26, 1946, the plan to retake the town of Xian Quan finally was given the green light. Tu Bi Li Fong assembled over 3,500 of his Hmong troops for the attack, while several hundreds of Fuan troops from Fuan Prince Sai Kam. French Commando Maurice Gautier I wasn't sure if we could muster 100 men, and yet here were our with over 4,000 men, mostly of Hmong with all kinds of weapons that the Hmong could muster up. 16 years old Vang Pao also participated in this battle. French Commando Maurice Gautier That night thousands of Hmong warriors dress in their dark tribal clothes descended down the hills and surrounded the town. The Hmong warriors capture the temple and the weapons store in the temple along with the Viet Minh gunner that were sleeping in the temple without making any noise and firing a shot. Prince Sai Kam led the Fuan troops to capture the position on top of the temple, which had machine gun and mortars. Unlike the Hmong warriors that capture the sleeping Viet Minh inside the temple, the Fuan warriors kill all the Viet Minh on top of the roof with knives while the Viet Minh were still sleeping. Around eight in the morning, shouting and shooting finally broke out, and after hours of fighting against the Viet Minh, the Viet Minh finally surrender, and the French flag was hoisted at the French government residence. On February 17, 1946, over 100 French soldiers of the cavalry regiment parachuted into Xian Quan. Fuan Prince Sai Kam and Tu Bi Li Fong was awarded the French Legion of Honor, while all soldiers from the Hmong and Fuan was awarded the French Croix de Guerre, the highest French decoration for combat valor. The French also appointed some of the Hmong people into the government position, and it was the first time Hmong held even a minor government position. Chong Tuamua was made Nikong of Faudu. Maurice Gautier soon visited the French headquarters in Saigon to push for what he had promised the Hmong people, for minority rights, opportunities, schools, and better health care, but the higher-up French in Saigon had little interest in those high mountains regions. Instead the French decided to increase the taxation to help rebuild the destruction of Indochina. In 1946, Lao King Ratsadane of the Lao Kingdom of Champasak died of old age and when he died King Sisavang Vong of the Lao Kingdom of Luan Probang immediately ordered royal members to seize the Lao Kingdom of Champasak. King Ratsadane, son Prince Baumaum, was supposed to take control of the Lao Kingdom of Champasak, but under pressure from the Lao Kingdom of Luan Probang, Prince Baonam surrendered the Lao Kingdom of Champasak to the Lao Kingdom of Luan Probang. Lao King Sisavang Vong of the Lao Kingdom of Luan Probang spared the lives of royal Lao families of the Lao Kingdom of Champasak under an agreement that they shall never make a claim on the Lao throne. On April 24, 1946, French troops reoccupied Vientiane by military force, and Prince Fetsarath along with the other princes and followers was forced to fled to Thailand. By August 1946, the French again completely control Laos again.